Hello friends, it's Kayla. I'm sick. I'm sorry. Uh, the intro of this video is going to be weird for a couple reasons. Because of my current state and because of the state I was in back in uh, June when I filmed and promptly accidentally deleted the entire first half of this video. We're in an unprecedented time in the world and it only seems appropriate that my content is also in an unprecedented uh, state. Never in my life has my obsessively organized self deleted clips accidentally. But back in June, actually let me throw back to May. So in May I tried out this uh, book recommendation service called mytbr.co and I had filmed it like months earlier and I was preparing and I posted the video in May where I got book recommendations, I explained the service, and I talked about what I thought of it. The books themselves that were recommended to me, I think I ended up with like a two star read, a three star read, and a four star read. So it was an interesting experience and I wanted to try it again. Um, but before I had time to like prepare for what I really wanted it to be, um, it was already like the renewal time for my next quarterly set of recommendations, like immediately after that video went up. So essentially in the same couple weeks of posting that video and then like deleting all the footage from that video, I had at the same time been filming for the second round because my recommendation time like was already coming up and I wanted to film my reactions to my recommendations again um but in deleting all the footage from the old video I accidentally deleted the footage from the upcoming video I don't know if this is making any sense I'm on a lot of day quill right now but I didn't want to scrap this video completely because I ended up reading some really interesting books but all I have is the vlog footage. But what I'll do right now is I'll recap what happened five months ago. Because what I did find is the screen recording from um, me looking through my recommendations. So I don't think I need to explain my tbr.co. This is just like a part two to it. I know that I created this thumbnail like a week ago before I realized I didn't have the footage. So that it probably looks more interesting than the actual video is going to be. Sorry about that. but. So five months ago, when I was requesting my next set of recommendations, uh, I think I kept my entire survey the same, but I just asked specifically if I could get only um, recommendations for black authors. I have no idea what that footage would have been talking through the survey, like I really have no idea. The actual footage that I'm sad about losing is my reactions to the recommendations because I think that's the most interesting part. But I do have the screen recording and I was really excited when I found this because I didn't know that my screen recordings have sound. So I was like, oh, I can hear my reactions as it happens. But I don't know why it's sped up like that. And then it also, cuts out after one minute. <laughs> I feel like everything is against me and this video. Maybe I could slow it down. Here it is. This one took eight days to get my recommendation. So basically you fill out this thing, you tell them everything that you want, things that you love, things that you don't, books that you've read, you link your Goodreads. And something that's really cool about them that I still think is cool is that I didn't get any recommendations for books already on my Goodreads. On one hand, I think it would be cool for them to like look at my TBR list and think, oh, she would really like these books that she's already planning on reading, let's make her read them. But this is the second time in a row that it, I may have heard of some of these books, but none of these books are already on my Goodreads. And it took eight days for my recommendations to come in. And I think they say within two weeks, your recommendations will come. <gasps> oh gosh. So this is me opening the email. All we have is sound. Oh my God, the Black Flamingo. I've heard of that. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go again. I've got three recs for you. I think are right up your alley, all by black authors. A YA novel in verse about a black gay teen who finds himself through da drag performing. A dark haunted house horror about a woman who returns to... And then the sound cuts out. I didn't even know my screen recordings had sound, so it was like a nice surprise, but then it was like, haha, just kidding, bitch. So basically, let me recreate my reactions for you. The first thing recommended is The Black Flamingo um, by Dean Ada, which I have heard of. Okay, just remember this was five months ago, because in the next clip you see where I read The Black Flamingo, I'm gonna tell you, I had no idea this was written in verse. <laughs> That's just because it had been five months since I read 
this email and I completely forgot. It's literally in this email twice. This YA book is written in verse. So let me continue reading the letter. Um, the dark haunted house horror about a woman who returns to her family home and a fantasy about a field hockey team who makes a pact with the devil to ensure a winning season. Can't wait to hear what you think of them. So I saw the black flamingo and I think I said something about I've never read a book about um, the drag scene but the recommendation did make sense to me because I've read a lot of books that I would consider like similar to that. It says I think you'll like this coming of age novel in verse about Michael, a gay mixed race teenager making sense of himself and the world. After struggling with his identities for most of his life, Michael heads to college and discovers the drag community and there he becomes the Black Flamingo. This is a beautiful emotional read about a boy growing more fully into himself. And then the next one on here is The Good House, a novel by Tanana Reeve Du. And it says, since you like horror, I think you'll like this great haunted house book. Angela is a lawyer still grieving the loss of her son who died by suicide in their family home. When Angela returns to the house, she finds it inhabited by a lethal force terrorizing the community around it. This is a dark and twisty horror with great characters and a great creep factor. And I think I said in my reaction, like, I've never heard of this author. I've never seen that cover before. Never heard of it. So excited for a recommendation I'd never heard of. Oh, and um, I should tell you that the both in the original round of this and this round I said the same thing. I wanted three recommendations. I wanted a horror or thriller. I wanted a an intense like YA contemporary and I wanted a weird book like magic or sci-fi or fabulism, magical realism, something like that. So for the third book recommended it's called We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry. It says, since you're looking for light fantasy, I think you'll like this delightful take on a girls field hockey team in the town of Danvers, Massachusetts, formerly Salem, Massachusetts. And then in my reaction, I said, oh my God, that's so weird that the one sport that I played in high school, I got a recommendation when I definitely like didn't put anything about that on my survey, but I was like, oh my God, they know me. They know that I played field hockey. The team is determined to have a winning season, even if it means allying with the devil to make it happen. This fun read balances well, darkness, humor, and coming of age. So those are my three recommendations. Um, they're from Chelsea. Here's what they look like. One thing I don't think I really acknowledged last time I got recommendations is that you do, I think I mentioned it, like you get paired with a person who gives you recommendations and it's cool because um, you can like, I think request to work with someone else next time and they have this whole page of their website um, where you can meet the bibliologists. So I didn't look at this, but Chelsea, there's Chelsea. What are your favorite genres? Fantasy, science fiction, mystery, young adult, middle grade. So we like some of the same genres and books and cookies. <laughs> so thank you, Chelsea, for your recommendations. Um, it's funny because at this point, I'm filming this after the fact, I know how all of this went down, my reading experience. So I'm excited to share it with you. Is there anything else I want to say before I get started in the vlog? Um, the reason it took me so long to actually read them is I ordered from... A different book list which is one of the only black owned bookstores in Canada and I know they experienced like an influx of support in like especially June um, which is really cool to see but also meant that it took a while for the books to arrive which I think like everybody kind of expected and was cool with I've since ordered from them a couple other times as well and the books have arrived pretty promptly um, so I would just like to remind you to support like indie bookstores in general if you can. Black owned bookstores make it like a consistent thing in your life because I know a lot of black owned businesses in general have seen an influx of orders and now uh, at this point in the year it's dwindling. So something that I need to remind myself and I might as well take the time to remind you if you're not already is to make sure that your support is not dependent on um, trauma and what's currently happening in the news and in the world and is more like regular and consistent and like able to be, I don't even know the word I'm looking for, sustainable. I feel terrible and it really reflects the vlog. Like this is a whole mess, I'm a mess, but I wanna talk to you about the books that I read this week. So let's get into it. 
So I got my package from a different book list, which is a Toronto based black owned bookstore that ships across Canada. I got two books from here and then I picked up one book from the library. These are the two that I got from a different book list. This is a thick book. 480 pages but it seems like the perfect halloween read since requesting the recommendations and getting the recommendations i've actually seen this author suggested many times in many different places as an author who does a lot of like perfect fall spooky books and i'm sad that i'd never heard of her before it says the home that belonged to angela to saint's late grandmother is so beloved that townspeople call it the good house but all that changes one summer when an unexpected tragedy takes place behind its closed doors and the family history and future is dramatically transformed. The next one is a book that I had heard about and I've seen lots of people reading. I have read a lot of books that seem to be in like a similar vein and I know a lot of people have loved this. So Michael is a mixed race gay teen growing up in London. All his life he's navigated what it means to be Greek and Jamaican but never quite feeling Greek or black enough. As he gets older, Michael's coming out is only the start of learning who he is and where he fits in. Oh my gosh! This is so pretty! Wow, oh my goodness. What a beautiful book. Okay, and then the last one. Again, after receiving this personalized recommendation, I've seen this book everywhere. And I've had it personally recommended to me by you guys. So let me tell you, this book... $36 in Canada, like a YA book. Maybe it's not YA. We're following the 1989 Danvers High School Falcons field hockey team who will do anything to make it to the state finals, even if it means tapping into the devilish dark powers. I am very intrigued. It sounds like the perfect weirdness for me. I never thought of field hockey as something that I wanted to read about but at least I'll be able to relate to it in some way. These are all pretty big books. I think if I do another round, I will ask for books, like I'll do a short book recommendation request. Can I read these in a week? I sure hope so because there's a readathon coming up and I need to get these completed before that. I just read a kind of spooky book. So I think to cleanse my palette, contemporary YA is where I'm gonna lean. So I'll let you know how this goes and just bring you along in my life. Today I had a live show. I'm trying to film two different videos. Robbie and Liam are out grabbing groceries and trying to find uh, a soap that I can use in an Instagram picture <laughs> because they're sweet babies who don't get paid enough for being the true assistants to my channel. So I might not check in with you until tomorrow because today's a busy day, but I am gonna start the Black Flamingo today. Okay, I didn't realize this this is written in verse so it's actually proving to be a much quicker read than i anticipated and i also started reading a little bit of the good house a couple pages but i'll talk to you about that tomorrow because i have no doubt i'm gonna fly through this this evening because i have nothing else going on um this is like oh how do i explain it so it's basically going through his life um, I don't know what I expected. I guess I expected more of a coming of age traditional novel set like right after high school entering the drag scene and the whole thing would be him learning about it and performing and I don't know what else but we're starting with him as a child and it's like he wants to play with pink toys and his mom doesn't want him to and then another little feels like vignettes just a little peek into a year of his life and during this time he meets a new girl during this time he's writing poetry um and his teacher gives him a notebook because he's been writing poetry and like how in love he is in his math book and then the teacher like slips him another notebook and then he meets a boy and he's in drama class and it's all just very sweet but then there begins to be people who are challenging his identity trying to label him he doesn't really know where he fits in this is great i'll keep you updated i can't get over how fast i got through this oh my gosh five stars i was 
I started this book ready to like compare it, recommend some other ones to you, or explain like why I think this was recommended to me because they're books that I mentioned in my survey that I loved like King and the Dragonflies by Keith and Calendar and like Tyler Johnson was here by Jay Coles. But unexpectedly what I would compare this to more is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I think that um, the writing style is similar, the poetic nature of it, and also a character getting comfortable performing. So like in The Poet X she's doing slam poetry. In here he's also performing poetry uh, and doing it as the black flamingo. We get like one performance piece at the end of this and it's kind of incredible. I highlighted a whole section of it that I loved so much. I love how it gives the intersections of blackness and queerness, the history of it. Kind of, it's hard to explain, you'll just have to read it. But like queerness predates its modern meaning. Queerness predates its derogatory meaning. Queer, like colonialism and religion. And it was just a really interesting part. Um, Oh my god, I loved everything in here. I'm kind of like, I didn't go into this thinking I wasn't going to like it, but I didn't know what I was getting into. There are poems in here that he's written himself, and so like some pages have titles. Listen, Men Are Sandcastles is one of my favorite poems I've ever read, and like this isn't even a book of poems. It's just that the poems are integrated into the narrative, but like everything's a poem. I just love it so much. Pick it up just so you can read that one. And then I also highlighted this whole section. Um, he's talking about the origin of name and choosing a, uh, choosing a drag name, just choosing a performance name, like how Nicki Minaj became Nicki Minaj and Lady Gaga and Beyonce and RuPaul. And then everyone's asking him like, what do you want to do for drag? Do you want to be a king or a queen? What are your pronouns on stage? And he goes, I'm just a man and I want to wear a dress and makeup on stage. I want to know how it feels to publicly express a side of me I've only felt privately when playing with my Barbie as a boy. It was only at home that I'd play with that toy. I knew mom loved me more than anyone else and with her I could be myself. I There was another section that just like acknowledged um, the history of drag and like respecting the trans and non-gender conforming people who came before him as a gay man doing drag. I appreciated all of that. He goes through all of these different experiences. Um, we follow him for years into college. He talks about sex and friendship and family and identity and it's everything that I wanted it to be. I did ask for a hard-hitting YA but I was asking for a lot because I looked back on my survey thing and I did specifically say I didn't want romance and he still has lots of relationships and I still was rooting for a specific relationship but it wasn't about that it was more about him falling in love with himself I said I was looking for queer stories as well but not romance so I think it ticked a lot of boxes even though I wouldn't call this hard-hitting or intense in the way that I traditionally understand it. He definitely went through a lot and experienced discrimination and bullying, um, but maybe just the nature of the storytelling, um, the way it's written, it didn't have that like emotional intensity. I don't feel like it was supposed to, but that's fine. I started this video out with a five-star read, so I'm so stoked and I started The Good House like I said and I have good feelings about that as well so I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good morning it's another day I'm wearing white strips <laughs> I didn't realize how funny I would sound oh no anyway I need to film today and I want to read this so it's the weekend but I'm getting fully ready because I need to film today some more and I thought I would try listening to The Good House because I found the audiobook on Libro FM and it's 21 hours long so I'm just gonna listen to a little bit while I get ready and I'll actually play you the audiobook so you can get an idea if it's interesting to you and I'll just get ready and then take a bunch of bookstagram pictures which is the other thing I need to do today so let's get into it. 
Sacagawea, Washington, July 4th, 1929. The knocking at her door early Thursday afternoon might have sounded angry to an ear unschooled in the difference between panic and a bad mood, but Marie Toussaint knew better. The knocking hammered like a hailstorm against the sturdy door Marie Toussaint's husband had built with wood he'd salvaged from a black walnut tree knocked over in the mudslide. The mud's recent wrath had left their two-story house untouched, but sprays of buckshot fired at the house during cowardly moments, usually at night, had pocked and splintered the old door. The mere sight of the damaged door had always made her angry, and Marie Toussaint no longer trusted herself when she was angry. Oh my gosh, it's so cold out. It's been raining all day, and now I have just like a chill that won't leave my bones. It's a couple days later, and I'm halfway through The Good House. 250 pages? 250 pages? Which is kind of the perfect length of a horror book for me. Like, I love just below average sized books when they're horror. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna take a bath later and take an Instagram picture with those things that Rob brought me. Have I even shown you? I'll show you in a minute. But I can't take a picture reading this, which I will actually be reading in the tub, but I'll take a picture of the other book, the We Ride Upon Sticks or whatever, with my little soaps that he brought home. But The Good House is about like, I thought the house would be the spookier part, the house is definitely an important setting in the book, but it's not like a haunted house necessarily. The spookiness comes with the characterization, and this is a very like character-focused, character-led story. I wouldn't call it horror. I don't know what I would call it. Supernatural, suspenseful, supernatural suspense, because there's this woman from like, hold on, does it give a date? I think the 19, 1929, um, there's this woman, how many times have I said this? There's a woman who helps people who might be possessed or something, she lets them into her home, and then there's like this curse, basically there's witchcraft type things, and we're following her descendants. And we're mainly following a woman named Angela, who I love and is very interesting. Um, and her son took his own life in the house. Um, and that kind of messed up things with this curse situation. And then he had a friend, um, and they're trying to find out information from this friend about like what the boys were into because the boys were into some weird magical stuff they were trying to figure out what was going on with his like great great grandmother and so now they're like grilling this other boy who's like i'm not involved i don't know so it's equal parts about like family and grieving and then also this supernatural element which is pretty traditional i feel like with a lot of the horror that i read is it's rooted in like difficult realities and then the horror is kind of reflecting real world scenarios and i'm enjoying it that's my update hopefully i'll finish this soon because it's been a couple days it's interesting it hasn't lost me yet it's just not scary Since the last time I saw you, I took my bath. I um, didn't like the picture that I ended up taking, but I might still post it. I reorganized my bookshelves. I have gotten really sick, and I've almost finished The Good House. By almost finished, I mean I still have like 70 pages to go, because this book is dense but it's easy to follow. I'm enjoying it a lot, but I'm having a hard time like finding time and the energy and the focus to complete it. For the last couple of nights, I've gotten like eight hours of sleep, which is super abnormal for me, but because I obviously need some rest, hopefully I'll feel better soon. 
but I have some like pre filmed content which is really great so I don't have to film this weekend at all uh, sounding like this except for the clips for this video I'm enjoying this I really like um, the kind of timelines I think I told you that the story revolves around Corey who ends up dying um, but throughout the book we end up going back to Corey's experience and him finding out like what's really going on with the house and the ancestral magic it's definitely slower and more um i don't know like character driven as opposed to plot driven than i expected but that's like me having to change my expectations of horror which is exactly why my goal is to read more in 2020 because it's not all just like jump scares and creepy things like we're reading a lot of just Angela's day-to-day -day life and a lot of sex scenes and a lot of like law talk it's all interesting and I'm excited for it to wrap up because I want to know like how this is all gonna end actually while I have you here last time I did a mytbr.co video I made the current TikTok trend Dalgona coffee. So, though this is probably going to be terrible for my throat, I'm going to make the latest TikTok sensation. <laughs> First, you take a mini pepper. I already cut the tops off. Then you put in cream cheese. Then you put in Cheetos. Hot Cheetos are definitely more of the trend, and it actually kind of tastes like pizza, like the flavors of a pizza, but the jalapeno Cheetos are my favorite, so... Mm-hmm. That's great. That's all I have for you. We'll see you in the morning. Hi. It's the next day. I feel terrible. I also just went to edit this video and I've just now realized that all of the footage is missing. Um, but I'm gonna have to film the opening clip where I explain all of that later. And I just realized that the Fortnite Frights Readathon starts tomorrow or for you today on Sunday I'm so used to readathon starting on Monday but the Fortnite fright starts on Sunday which means today being Saturday I have to read the entirety of this in order to like stick with my content schedule I can only blame myself but it feels like the universe is against this video because nothing's going right I don't know it took me like five days to read this and I did really enjoy it but I don't think I have like the mental capacity to explain this book or what I liked about it and I can't remember what I already talked about I'm having a moment it's already like noon on Saturday um, and I have nothing to do today <laughs> like I'm just gonna be lying here anyway doing nothing so I think I can probably read this but it is like kind of long oh no it's not 360 pages it just feels intense librarians don't come for me because they took off the plastic coating <laughs> I have the tape that libraries use and I can put it back together and I didn't ruin the integrity of the book I haven't done this in a really long time and I won't do it again. So this is about, what was this even about? Field hockey? Oh, you're waiting for me to actually talk about this. I wasn't kidding, like I don't know what to say. I haven't read a lot like this multi-generational um, curses. So Quanberry, Quanberry? What a name, Quanberry. Oh, it's just, that's a, that's a child, what? The author as the Danvers High School Marching Band Baton Mascot. What does that mean? We've got a little map inside. There's a witch. What is this actually about? I really don't know what to expect from this. So, I'm excited. And we start with all of the characters. Centers, forwards, wings, center back, half back, sweeper, goalie. Should I memorize all these people? Got characters named Boy Corey, Jen, AJ, Abby, Girl, Girl Corey? <laughs> Girl Corey and Boy Corey. 
that's not funny sorry why okay little smitty <laughs> becca julie heather heather and sue oh and the goalie mel just in case you wanted to know <laughs> i'm so confused is this real <laughs> I'm out of my mind. Why does this sound like nonfiction? <laughs> There's just a character named Abby Putman. Putman? Putnam? And then I open the book and there's a quote from Anne Putman from the 1700s. And then I was like, so is that a real quote? Or is that a quote inside the book? Or is the book real? Did these are these people real did this really happen i'm too stupid for this i just flipped to a page and it said penis breath okay okay i'll let you know what happens maybe i should just sleep all day instead oh my god okay it's quite a bit later i think you can tell it's dark in here now we're at a different angle and now you can see all my peanut butter cup wrappers but at least you know i'm happy i'm about 40 percent of the way through this and it's weird but in a way that's hard to describe i think the writing in general is just kind of unfamiliar there's a lot of in-game stuff like the next chapter is the danvers versus salem so i appreciate how much in-game um commentary there is because there's nothing worse than picking up a book about sports that ignores the sport itself with that said i don't like pick up sports books in general so like i appreciate what this one's doing but oh i lost my page but it's still like not something i'm particularly interested in like i wasn't even interested in field hockey when i was doing field hockey what i appreciate the most is some different commentary that we're getting on like race and prejudice and um what else like toxic masculinity we have one girl who um developed breasts earlier than like the average girl and she's gotten all of this unwanted male attention and it's been talking about like how she has to go about the world being like sexualized by older men just because of her appearance and also the ways that um these girls and just like women in general have to behave in the world and like even if you don't like a boy but if if a boy likes you you have to still smile at him and flirt with him so he won't put a spider in your desk also conversations about sexuality and how women in sports and for some reason like women in specific sports are always assumed to be gay there was a couple other things like that that i just think are really great and are pretty common in like these girl gang type books which is why i appreciate them and i think why i tend to pick them up on my own volition oh my god i just have to say like i did not set you up for the right like um oh my god what my updates for this book were not as enthusiastic as they should have been like i don't think i'm ever gonna get over this book i'm like <laughs> freaking out about it i cannot believe that prior to this i had never heard of this book this book needs so much more hype like maybe it does have hype and i just like I'm not following the people who are hyping it. This is so fucking weird. Like, perfect weird. Holy shit. I ended up with two five-star books and a four-star in this video, in this week of my life. Oh my god. If you liked Bunny, this is not like Dark Academia. Um, it doesn't have an ac- well, it kind of has an academic setting. For fans of Bunny, for fans of, like, Catherine House, weirdly like the georgia nicholson angus thongs and profrontal snogging series obviously heathers like the movie it took me like halfway through before i really like understood and got on board with what was going on and i didn't talk about like the biggest factor of this book um in an earlier clip which i should have which is the fact that this is written in like first person plural which was my favorite thing about bunny was there was just a little bit of that but 
it's like the idea that this group of girls starts to like have one mind and think collectively it's so fucking weird but it's the entire book like we don't have a main character all of these characters who i was like oh they all need equal page time or whatever yeah they got equal page time because they're all like one collective mind oh a.s king oh my god if you love dig or i crawl through it by a.s king that's the weird vibe all of these different characters and they all have like weird names or there's weird things going on how do you even talk about this book um so there are some objects that are what's the word personified so like um <laughs> this is set in the 80s and us 90s girls probably had moms who had like the poof you know the bangs that like went like this and i know a lot of us probably have photos of ourselves as eight-year-olds you know what i'm talking about family photo and our moms gave us the poof so the the claw is what they call it and it's it's very um prevalent in the book and it's like its own character <laughs> it's so funny there's other things that are personified um and it's just like one of the weirdest things i've read but the story isn't like hard to understand it's about field hockey it's about this field hockey team and everything that they're going through and they talk about all the things that like you know growing up in the 80s involved the music and the tv and the cultural references which is so cool like the music references alone were some of my favorite things like it wasn't just like talking about bon jovi and white snake but it was also like referenced cinderella it was like one of my favorite bands and not necessarily like underground music that nobody's heard of but it was clearly written by somebody who was living during this time and it was about like what girls are going through they talk about sex like at length and everyone's first time and they talk about growing boobs and they talk about periods and they talk about just like all of this stuff um but also like they all believe that there's this book where like if they write their name i don't know just like everything good happens to them because of this and they all have these like scarf things they wear as armbands and it helps connect them and gives them like these abilities and lets them get away with stuff and it's so interesting the tone is so interesting like it could have gone darker but it was almost better that it just played this like really strange overall tone and didn't try too hard. I also like don't want to spoil anything but the ending of this is one of my favorite endings and not even a traditional ending that I'm looking for but it was flawless and fit perfectly with the book. There were so many characters in here and I can't believe that I kept them all straight and they were all so distinct they were all equally important to like the storyline and i cared about all of them equally holy shit like i don't even know how to talk about the actual plot because like what happened they were playing field hockey they were going through stuff they were in school they were at sporting events they were at prom like it seriously if you love 80s movies and you're so in the 80s and early 90s vibe you have to read this this is the one I was the most apprehensive of, of the three books that got recommended. I was like, this weird magic stuff is either a hit or a miss for me. And I've been wronged so many times by what I've picked for myself to read that there's no way that a stranger could select something so perfect for me. But she fucking did it. I'm in awe. Let me grab the three books so I can hold them up for you for no reason. Here they are. This was so successful and i'm so happy about it this is why i've been grappling for the last like 48 hours about should i even post this video because i lost so much of it but i had to force myself through it because i really needed you to know how much i loved these books and to just like be able to recommend them to you in more than just a wrap up because my enthusiasm <laughs> for these two specifically like these are such good books and not that i wasn't expecting them to be but like I would not have picked these up on my own without Chelsea guiding my way. 
same with the good house like this is an author i'm absolutely gonna check out more from i know she has so many books just like last time um i know that there is feedback that like this recommendation service is silly you can get free recommendations you know go to the library people on booktube like there are free recommendations all over the internet and i fully acknowledge that and i don't think it's necessary for anybody to spend money to get a recommendation but i still think that it's fun which is why i did it for a second time and this time turned out even better than the first which is amazing i'm still not an affiliate i still am not being paid by them but i'll link them down below in case you want to try this just because i think it's interesting and clearly this time it went really really well so thank you so much for watching if you got through this whole video it probably wasn't that long because i lost half of it and i'm gonna go edit it now uh thanks for hanging out with me i will see you very soon bye